Even though the 787 Dreamliner came out before the A350 project from Airbus, the A350-900 would be in service before the 787-10. Even though these two wide bodies are almost the same size, their performance factors make their mission profiles very different. Let's compare the planes made by different companies today. Development Timeline even though they can do the same things, the Airbus 350-900 is better than the Boeing 787-10. Even though their efficiency may be a factor, it's also important to know that the A350-900 came out years before the 787-10, so their schedules are different. In January 2003, Boeing officially showed off a new aeroplane project which they are calling the Boeing 7E7 for now. In April 2004, All Nippon Airways or ANA was the first customer for the 787 project. The A350 project started in July 2005 but the first plane will be similar to the A330. Airbus showed a redesigned A350 in July 2006 based on feedback from big customers. This time it has a clean slate with a wider fuselage made of composite materials, hence the name Extra Wide Body or XWB. The first 787, the 787-8, was given to ANA in September 2011. This is three years later than planned. Boeing says that the 787-10 will make its launch in June 2013. The jet is a longer form of the 787-9, but its fuel capacity and MTOW are the same. In January 2015, Qatar Airways brought out the A350-900. In March 2018, Singapore Airlines will get the first 787-10. This simplified timeline shows that the carbon composite A350 was a reaction to the 787 and came out a few years after the first Dreamliner. On the other hand, the 787-10 came out seven years after the A350. The Dreamliner was put into service three years after the first commercial flight of the A350-900. When it comes to sales, it's most likely one of the reasons why the number of orders is different. Both planes are nearly the same size. Even though both planes hold about the same number of people at most, the Dreamliner is a bit longer and the A350 is a lot wider. In the end, the A350 is a larger plane that can carry more fuel and has engines that are more powerful. Because it can hold more fuel, the plane can also fly 2,000 kilometers farther than its Boeing rival. The 787-10, on the other hand, will likely be able to burn fuel more efficiently because it's lighter and has less fuel capacity. However, the manufacturer does not post specific numbers on this parameter. But even if the range is cut, the aircraft's MTOW will be lower, so landing fees and operating costs should be lower in the long run. Also, because the plane has a slightly longer fuselage and a smaller bulk compartment, it can hold four more LD3 crates, which could be helpful for cargo operations. Let's compare how well sales and orders did. From the official sales records from both companies, we can see that as of January 2023, 215-787-10s have been ordered from Boeing. In 2013, Etihad put in a single order for 30 planes, and in 2013 and 2017, Singapore Airlines put in two different orders for 27 and 15 respectively. United Airlines bought 26 Streamliners in four separate orders, according to official Boeing data. However, the airline recently committed to buying 100 Dreamliners and has options to buy another 100. The airline's order does not say anything about variations, so the carrier might add more 787-10s to its fleet in the future. As of December 31, 2022, contracts for an amazing 750 airframes had been placed with Airbus, which is a European plane manufacturer. Singapore Airlines seems to be the main customer for this version as they've bought 65 of them. Emirates has promised to buy 50 of these and Lufthansa 45 and Qatar Airways 34 have also made large commitments. United Airlines is still listed as wanting 45 A350s, even though this order has been in the works for almost a decade and many people aren't sure if the company will actually follow through. The most recent thing that would change these figures a little bit is the big order from Air India. But when you compare our two models, the airline will only use 6 A350-900s and 20 787-9s. Adding this new information would definitely tilt the scales in favor of Airbus, but not by much, since the company already has a big lead. 
The experience of the tourist. It can be hard to compare how comfortable a passenger is when so much of the experience is up to the company. Seat space, comfort, and entertainment during the trip are all decided by the operator, not the plane's maker. But there are some general things to think about with these two planes. It's also important to note that many of these points are related to the larger discussion between the A350 and the 787. Window differences. When it comes to how people feel on the Boeing 787, the windows make a big difference. These dimmable windows are some of the biggest in the sky. They're about 27 by 47 centimeters or 10.63 inches by 18.5 inches, and the lighting can be changed. The benefit for the people is that they can still see out the window well even though the sun is very bright. The problem for customers, at least those near the window, is that cabin staff can control them from a distance and even turn them off. So this feature doesn't offer a clear advantage over the A350 because some passengers prefer standard window coverings. The windows and plastic shades on the A350 are smaller than those on the Dreamliner. They measure 24.1 by 34.3 centimeters or 9.5 inches by 13.5 inches. How the width of the cabin affects how the seats are set up. Boeing doesn't have much control over how airlines set up the passenger rooms of their planes, but in the end, the number of seats per row is limited by the width of the cabin. Even though this is less of a problem in first-class rooms, it could be a problem in economy-class cabins. Almost all airlines that fly 787-10s use a 333 layout for the economy class. Seat Guru study shows that this usually means that the seat width is between 17 and 17 and a half inches. The seats in the A350 900s economy class are also set up 333, but because the interior is a little bit bigger, most airlines list their seats as 18 inches wide. Some companies have been able to fit a tenth seat in each row because the cabin is a little bit bigger. In this case, the width of the seat will be between 16 and 16.5 inches. French B and Air Caribe both use this style. Range seems to be the main point of disagreement when it comes to the 787-10. Even though the Dash 10 has the same amount of fuel as the 787-9, it can't fly as far as the shorter Dreamliners. Because of this, the plane has been called more of a regional aircraft than its predecessors, as Brian Summers of Skift wrote in 2018. Summers started his article about the 787-10 skills, or lack thereof, by saying older 787 Dreamliners changed aviation by letting airlines open new long-haul routes that were sexier than ever. It's not likely that the 787-10 will do that, but it's still an amazing plane. Summers is right when he says the 787-10 won't make a big difference in ultra-long-haul flight, especially when compared to the Dreamliner 8 and 9. But, as was already said, the Dash 10 will be a cheap plane that can turn unprofitable routes into lucrative ones. To wrap up this comparison, it looks like the A350-900 is a more capable plane, especially for longer flights. To get this range, the A350 has bigger fuel tanks, which makes it heavier to fly. The lighter 787-10 will not be able to go as far as the A350-900 because its fuel tanks are smaller. However, it can still fly long distances with the same number of people and a little more cargo than the A350-900. People say that Boeing is working on a high gross weight or extended range version of the 787-10 to fix problems with its range. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.